So this video is going to be a little bit different because we have just crossed 10,000 subscribers. I Again, I know everyone always says it, but I honestly never thought I'll get here. I still remember last year when I was on holiday in Mallorca, getting really excited about 50 subscribers. And now a year and a bit later, I'm at 10,000 and it's just an amazing feeling. I'm really surprised actually 10,000 people are this interested in data science content, but it goes to show you that there is a community out there for everyone. So in this video, I want to go over just some questions I've been getting in my comment section, newsletters, about data science concepts and about a few other things as well. Hopefully you enjoy it. We have like several questions and I'll leave timestamps below so you can like go to the appropriate one if you don't want to watch the whole video. But anyway, I hope you enjoy it regardless. So the first question I've got is, I would love to know if there are good chances for a data scientist to become a freelancer. And if so, what type of work do they have compared to data scientists who typically work at big companies? Do startups usually need data scientists as well? Or rather most common, just bigger companies? Thank you. So there's kind of like two questions in one here. So the first one was essentially about how, you know, if there's a good chance of becoming a freelancer as a data scientist. And the answer is yes. I know many data scientists who are now freelancers and I've known many data scientists who were always basically freelancers. It's quite a common thing for, to happen because, you know, as being a freelancer, you get to, you know, make your own hours, your own pay, work on projects you want to work on. Obviously there's less security, you could argue, but being a freelancer is a pretty good gig. The problem with being a freelancer, I would argue, is that you kind of need experience before you can become a freelancer, right? No one's going to hire you straight out of university saying you're a data scientist freelancer. Well, they may, but it, you know, it all comes down to basically your experience uh, and your knowledge skills. And if you work for a company like Google and then you become a freelancer, then there's a lot more social proof and people will trust you and probably give you more projects in that respect. And the second part was, do startups usually need data scientists as well or rather most big companies? Um, no, startups do have data scientists. I would argue it's less because typically the data scientists are like the icing on the cake or you need basically a lot of infrastructure already in the company for data scientists to be effective. Initially, when you're building a startup, you're not looking to maximize every part of your business, at least this is from my opinion. You're more looking just to build something and then product it, market it, etc. Data scientists come in later down the line when you're trying to make more data-driven decisions, but you need that data somewhere. So yes, you can, you can have data scientists in startups. I'd be very surprised if you're a data scientist in a startup and you're like one of the first 10 highest, to be honest. It'd probably be more like higher 50. But again, I'm not an expert in this. This is, just, this is just what I've seen out there in the market. The second question I've got is, as I'm a fresher, how I become like a data scientist like you? So, yeah, by fresher, for those of you who don't know what that means in the US, a fresher is basically a first year university student. So the way I recommend, uh, you know, if you're a fresher or first year university or college to become a data scientist is, well, I don't really know what you're studying, but hopefully you're studying, you know, either a STEM subject. Ideally, you should study something like CS, maths, statistics, Physics to an extent, but I'd actually argue those three subjects are probably more applicable than physics. Then whilst at university or college, make sure you take as many uh, statistics modules as possible. So learn all about the range of stats, maths, and computer science if possible. So make sure you kind of have all your modules in place if you're not doing one of those subjects anyway. And also try and do any computational projects or modules that offer that because that's something to talk about on your CV. And if possible, this is what I really recommend, is try and get an internship somehow in your summers, uh, whether that be at a university, a local company, just anything. Uh, from my experience, if you even have one internship in data science, then that really opens up a lot of doors when you're applying for graduate roles or entry level positions after you graduate. So if possible, there's so many ways of getting internships out there. I've even done a video on it. Uh, and apart from that, follow a data science roadmap. I also have loads. So while you're doing all the studying, applying for internships, if you want to also learn things in your spare time, that's not directly related to your, your university work, then follow a data science roadmap. I'll link on the screen here a video you can check out, which is how I would learn data science if I was starting again. So the third question I've got is, do you create your own machine learning models or you use already existing ones? 
is creating customized models easy and how do I start? Yeah, so typically as you progress your data science career, most companies will use their own models or build their own models. By own, it's a weird word because we will, we will build our own models, but we use libraries like CapBoost, XGBoost, uh, PyTorch, etc. So we're not literally building neural networks from scratch. We're using existing packages to build our models, but they're not off the shelf in the same way. Like we have to do all the features, the hyperparameter tuning, the, the, the formulation of the problem. So it's really just a tool, but we do build the models technically from scratch ourselves. In terms of how easy it is, it's like anything, the more you do it, the easier it gets. I would say, I think when I was about six months into my first data science uh, graduate scheme, I felt pretty comfortable in building models. Again, like I said, just takes practice. It's not, it's not overly difficult. Once you know Python syntax and a bit about machine learning, then it's pretty simple. But obviously there's an art to building a model. It's not as simple as just giving it data and it will learn. You have to be more creative, understand your domain, you know, there's a real skill gap and, like I said, are involved in building machine learning models that a lot of people sometimes oversee. The next question is, what are your thoughts on a 35 year old deciding to learn data science in order to build a career in the field? Well, I would say, to be honest, your age doesn't matter, particularly for 35. Um, nothing wrong with changing careers later on. You know, you're, you're still young, 35. I mean, again, don't take proper life advice from me because I'm 25. If you imagine that you work till 60, 65, like the retirement age in most countries, and if you're 35, let's say, you know, conservative estimate, you kind of get your first data science job at 40, then that's a good 20 years you have working in a career you really like. So in my opinion, if you don't like your current job and you're willing to make a sacrifice for five years, um, I don't know exactly your situation, then to be honest, like, yeah, you have a 20 year long career in something you really, really like and you really enjoy that time. So don't be afraid of pivoting or changing. Um, again, I'm 25, I'm not having lived a full life at all. So maybe I'll feel differently about this later on. But from what I've seen from my colleagues, um, many of them have pivoted into data science in like the early 30s and they don't regret it. They went back to university, upskilled, and then got a job they really like and they moved up the ranks really quickly because they're also older, have more professionalism about them. They understand how organizations work. So if anything, you probably accelerate through the levels, uh, the older you are and the more if you do decide to upskill. The fifth question I've got is, uh, do data scientists need to learn about fine tuning LLM applications? And at what scenarios do data scientists use deep learning, NLP techniques, etc.? So I think I've said this before in a few of my videos. Uh, many companies from what I know don't really use LLMs or they say they do, but you're not going to really work on LLMs and all this cutting edge technologies unless you're working at a big research lab or your team is specifically designed to focus on that. So I'm sure like Meta, Google, uh, all have teams dedicated to LLMs, but most data scientists will just use regular machine learning models like XGBoost, neural networks, you know, things like, things like that, right? You, you're hardly going to work in a place where LLMs are needed. So no, you don't need to learn LLMs and all this tuning stuff if you want to be a data scientist. So many jobs that require it. And in fact, it's a minority. So there'll be so much opportunity out there for you anyway. And the second part of your question is, what scenarios do data scientists use deep learning techniques? Well, deep learning can be used anywhere, technically, right? It's a supervised learning problem. You can apply it to any supervised learning problem, which is loads of problems. Um, but the problem with deep learning is that explainability, you need a lot of data and it's just harder to set up. So areas like recommendation systems would use deep learning quite a lot. Uh, same with NLP, we use recommendation systems. So it does exist and it's out there. Again, I wouldn't be hell bent on becoming a data scientist if you want to work on just deep learning because a lot of the commercial and businesses I've worked in, this is not really done. I've rarely seen neural networks actually applied success successfully or if at all. So no, you don't need to be a data scientist. You can become a great data scientist by just learning the fundamentals of ML, statistics, and having good business sense. The, the final question I've got is, what advice would you give to someone just starting out and to, to diversify their income sources? Yeah, so without going into the question straight away, I am not a financial advisor. And nothing I'm gonna give is financial advice. In terms of diversifying your income sources, 
I'm not an expert on this, I'm not a finance channel, but I do have a bit of diversity in my income, as you probably see from one of my previous videos. In a nutshell, there's different ways. Investing is the easiest way to start because you don't really need to do anything. Um, what you do, you need to put money into your investments. But apart from that, there's quite a low barrier to entry. Um, like I said, I've done a whole video on investing. Most of my investments are in the S&P 500, blue chip stocks, and a bit in crypto. Um, again, do your own research, but investing is a good way to diversify your income stream. That's quite easy and low maintenance on your on your end. Other ways, uh, there's so many different possibilities. Obviously, I do content. You earn money from content. Content is kind of hard because it takes a while to get things off the ground. And even now, I'm not exactly making millions at all. I've been doing this for a few years uh, at, at, at this current point, point in time. So content's a good way. It's enjoyable. You learn things. Uh, it's fun. Like I said, like if you want to do content, then do content. Just realize it's a long-term game. And that if you do want to monetize, you're going to have to look elsewhere and build other products in order to make a sustainable income from it. But if you want to do content, then I recommend YouTube by far. YouTube, long form content, build an audience is probably the best platform for that. Things like TikTok, Instagram are, you know, are also useful, but you don't build that same kind of uh, relationship with your audience like you would on YouTube. You can also start blogging or medium. That's something else I do that generates a bit of income. So there's many possibilities out there. You just got to choose a platform that you like and get to work on it. Uh, the other method you can make money, which is probably what most people recommend, is provide a service-based business. So by service-based would mean like, take me as a data scientist. I can then go sell my data science skills to companies who are looking for basically like contract work or like a freelance work. That's probably an easier way of making side income if you want but again it's not scalable so what's going to happen is the more you work the more money you'll get but again like content is scalable so you may not get as many kind of much benefit from it early on at least financially but over time it will scale and the work you put into it will kind of be asymmetric to the reward you'll get hopefully so those are some ideas. Again, loads of people have done videos on this. I'm by far not an expert, uh, but the one I recommend, I think everyone should try and start, at least invest your money somehow. Again, I don't know what that means to invest your money. I investing money means different things to different people, but having somewhere that your money grows and you don't touch it is a great starting point. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, again, it's a bit rambly. I probably didn't make all my points very crystal clear, but it's just a subscriber q and I'm not trying to optimize for any form of that retention. So again, hope you liked it. I hope you found the questions useful. Send me any more questions that you need or, or you want, sorry, and I'll, and I'll answer them in my spare time. Uh, I can even book a mentoring call with a link down below where we can discuss things on a more one-to-one -one basis for about half an hour if that's something that interests you. Again, thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. I am really shocked we got here to be honest when i see that number it's kind of surreal in a way uh i don't know how far this will grow uh but i'm just looking to make a video every week uh, indefinitely i don't really give myself time scales i just go with the process try to get better and try and provide more and more value to you guys out there so i'm glad 10,000 people are enjoying this content uh and that means a lot to me